Hello, everyone. This is Lu from Tongji University, Shanghai, China. And uh, today, uh, my story will start from uh, the city of Shanghai. I know that Shanghai is the biggest city in uh, China, and it's also one of the most traffic jam cities in China. And every day, every Shanghainese, they will spend one to two hours on commuting. And uh, the average uh, commuting distance for the population in Shang Shanghai is 12.4 kilometer per person per day. And every day, every uh, commuter is releasing 0.7 uh, kilogram uh, carbon emissions. And in addition to the direct carbon emissions, each commuter is also associated with the indirect carbon emissions, which is 13.5 uh, tons per year. So if we can reduce the commute time to 15 minutes, and then, I mean, every year, each commuter can reduce 13.8 tons carbon emissions. That's a lot, right? And our solution is enabling one third of the commuting population to work within the community. We can even imagine a five minutes community. So this become a long-term uh, uh, active research agenda for uh, Tongji University, the College of Design and Innovation. Actually, it's a part of uh, a bigger project uh, I started almost 10 years ago, so it blurs the boundary between the university campus and the neighborhood community. And we start with a series of uh, uh, design intervention, uh, uh, community regeneration project. Uh, and then, I mean, we start to set up laboratories uh, in the neighborhood community uh, surrounding the campuses. And uh, this is a laboratory, it's actually uh, this is a glass workshop we move from the college into the street corner. And the highlight of this initiative that it's in 2017, and uh, together with MIT Media Lab, uh, we established the Shanghai uh, MIT, uh, Tongji MIT City Science Lab uh, in Shanghai. So this is Professor Kent Rawson, actually he was uh, visiting the site on uh, 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 2016. And uh, uh, almost within five years, and we uh, successfully extend 50% uh, of the space of the College of Design Innovation into the uh, neighborhood community. And it become a small but a connected network. It's not belong to the university, but uh, we are using it every day. And then in 2018, we start a project called NICE 2035 Living Line, and it's a, a, a line of a, a work in the workers' community, which is a, about five, uh, no, seven minutes walking distance from the college. And uh, we uh, using the living lab approach. We set up a laboratories, incubators, co-working spaces uh, in this uh, 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 workers' village. And uh, uh, among all of these uh, uh, laboratories, this uh, Tongji Austin Martin lab has uh, become the most famous one. Looks very nice, isn't it? But if you look above. That's a real scenario, and we really believe that if we are closer to the real world challenges, if we are closer to the problems, closer to the, uh, the, the challenges, we are also closer to the uh, innovative solutions. And this is also an experiment and a prototype of a community-supported living scenarios. And this is observation from COVID-19, and typically the high-quality resources in the city, especially in China, they are all located in city center, including the facilities, services, places. But during COVID, especially during lockdown, we suddenly realized that, I mean, actually working, living, I mean, uh, shopping, everything that can happen in a tiny apartment, it could be possible, but definitely, this is not a design one. So how to um, increase the quality of our neighborhood, especially within five minutes walking distance, become a huge opportunity. And uh, so we uh, test, uh, explore all kinds of uh, possibilities of uh, uh, creating uh, high quality uh, space and the services uh, embedded in community, including working, learning, uh, meeting, like, uh, networking, etc., etc. And uh, it also I mean, changed uh, 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 traditional logic of uh, uh, human settlements and also I mean, uh, challenging the traditional model of a housing market. Housing uh, market. How about a small apartment plus a share the community, become a, empowered by a good service, become a new possibility. And uh, my colleague, Professor Otto Cibic, and uh, he designed a 34 uh, uh, square meters uh, tiny apartment, and he moved in to uh, this community. And uh, eventually, this project becomes the most published uh, Chinese residential design project worldwide. 
And uh, actually, his life is quite good because we have a nice commute to support all, everything he needs. He has good coffee, uh, a, a, a very uh, fancy kitchen, and he can rent if he wants to host to his uh, uh, friends. And uh, there's entertainment, working, all of the function he needs can be realized in this community. So this case, I mean, I, I, we think that if we can popularize uh, such a model, and it will not only significantly reduce the commuting and the carbon emissions, but also greatly improve the people's quality of life. And the city science approaches, I mean, has been uh, widely used in this project. And my colleague, Dr. Liu Yang and uh, Ryan, and they developed the city scope table for this project. And uh, my team is also uh, working uh, on using the data-driven approach to uh, evaluate the quality of uh, uh, the participatory design and uh, uh, explore uh, the mechanism of uh, uh, the social engagement and also, I mean, uh, uh, to uh, enable the data driven uh, community building, uh, both online and offline. And uh, after COVID, we decided to scale up this prototype from the 80 square meters uh, living line to Chifeng Road. This is a 800 meters long uh, uh, street. It's in between two Tongji campuses. There's lots of interesting experiments actually ongoing. And uh, as a conclusion, I think that there's a people's action that generates the places and not vice versa. And it's time to reimagine the sustainable city and the sustainable ways of uh, uh, living and producing. Thank you very much.